Hello again and welcome to another topic on audits. Today we're going to talk about audit triggers and the process of an audit. Stay tuned. What are audit triggers? First of all, an audit can be performed on request whereby this request does not usually originate from the sponsors or institutions responsible for auditing, but from third parties such as monitors, in the case where they have observed that in a trial site, the protocol is continuously violated despite repeated hints. In such a case, the monitor would ask the sponsor to perform an audit by an employee of the Quality Assurance Department. Also, a suspected case may serve as an audit trigger. Such audits are called for-cause audits. A suspected case would be, for example, if the data was particularly error-free and no queries existed. This looks like a fantasy and questionable. This case has already happened by all means. In other words, in the scope of studies, subjects have been invented by investigators. These fictitious subjects were on average too healthy to be derived from a natural sample. They apparently suffered from few concomitant diseases and accordingly little parallel medication was listed and generally very little was recorded, which in turn caused few queries. Hence, data were clean in the first place, which is very suspicious. An exception of course exists if only a few subjects are enrolled in a trial site. Another example is a too rapid or too extensive subject enrollment as a possible audit trigger. As a rule, there's no frequent occurrence, for example, in a town of 50 inhabitants, managed to recruit about 120 enrolled within three weeks. Would of course seem suspicious. And if an inspection has been announced shortly before the auditors, as a rule, will announce the so-called pre-inspection audit simultaneously within the audit. As some countries have more active authorities, inspections take place in these authorities more often than in others. Let's now look at the audit process. First, each auditor will check the existence of the informed consent forms of all enrolled subjects, which can be very time-consuming in large trial sites with many enrolled subjects. In this case, the audit would certainly last several days. Then the investigator site file is checked. In this context, it should be noted that many investigators do not maintain the site file correctly because they assume that this is the task of the monitor. However, the investigator site file must be maintained by the investigator. He or she also, for example, bears ultimate responsibility for uncompleted logs, documents or missing approvals. When maintaining the investigator site file, the monitor only has a supporting role. For instance, he or she is available for questions regarding handling of this file. Similar to a monitor, an auditor also performs a source data verification of a sample of 30% of the subjects. For example, they will check the storage of the study medication, dealing with the study medication and the required documentation. They would also check the correct handling of laboratory samples and the qualification certificates of the study personnel. That's it today for audit triggers and the process of auditing. In case of any questions, comments, feel free to write us using any of the comment section below. Until next time, goodbye! Hey there! Don't forget, like and subscribe. But most importantly, click that bell so you never miss another video.